We're here in Sydney with a Melbourneite, George Cabagnari's very well-known comedian. He's going to speak to us a little bit about what it's like being a tourist in Sydney and what it's like being a tourist in Athens. I wouldn't say I was a tourist in Sydney because my Bethera lives in Sydney. My wife is a Sydney girl uh, from Earlwood and Marrickville. So I guess I'm a little bit Sydney. So, um, you know, I've been around Sydney a bit okay, now, so I know what's going on, especially uh, around the uh, southwestern suburbs. Okay, yeah. and your heritage is from Greece, so you have a bond yeah. with both cities. Well, mum like and dad, mum and dad are from Greece, yes, and and my dad actually, we, we were talking about Athens today. My dad did live in Athens for a while, right. um, because of course you'd, you'd leave Kalamata and you'd go to Athens to try and the big, the big smoke, like Sydney is the big smoke in Australia. You end up going to Sydney to to make something of yourself. So uh, yeah, I think I tick all the boxes for this um, this little uh, yeah. project you do. Okay, so um, with your last experience in Athens, yeah, tell us a little bit about it. The adventure of actually going to the Acropolis. Now the Acropolis. That's a funny story because when I was um, a little boy, I was six when I first went to Greece, and we drove. We went to Athens. We drove past the Acropolis, and I looked up and I said to my mum. Oh, I just want to go there. That was like, to me, it was like paradise. It was like heaven, this place. It looked like, you know, as the uh, the Vikings say, uh, is a Valhalla. This was my Mecca. This was, this is, this is what it's about being Greek, is to go to the Acropolis. Or okay? at the age of six. And I couldn't go. We didn't go. I was so oh. disappointed. Now, I didn't get to Greece again until 30, until I was 35. So that's 29 years later because I was so busy. Uh, doing all the shows, Acropolis Now, Wog's Out of Work, you know, the stand-up, the TV shows, the Flying Doctors, what have you. I didn't ever, I never got a chance to go to Greece for a holiday. So eventually, when I was a 35-year-old, I went to Greece uh, with my friend Tony Nikolakopoulos. You know Tony? Who uh, was in, of course, uh, Alex and Eve with me and uh, a few other projects. And um, I went to Greece and that was my main aim was to go to the Acropolis. So I'm staying there with some cousins, uh, family, friends or cousins uh, from Kalamata who were living in Athens. And I said to my cousin uh, Mina, I said, I'm really excited because tomorrow I get to see the Acropolis. Kick that off your bucket list. And she said, what do you want to go there for? I said, what do you mean? Okay. She goes, the Acropolis. I go, yeah, isn't that like what, what it is to be Greek, to go to the Acropolis? There's, that's our origin, that's where we come from. She goes, it's just the rock. We had to go there for school. I have another frappe and a cigarette, <laughs> sit <laughs> down. Do. So there you go, it's, it means so much to us here from Australia, Greeks from Australia and the rest of the world, the diasporic Greeks around the world. But to the Greeks in Greece, they're more interested in going to the bazooka, you know, uh, have another but, but it's frappe. Like, it's like when we're here in Sydney and we end up Friends come from Greece. That's the only time we really go to the Opera House, climb the yeah. Harbour Bridge. It's something well, that's just there. How do so we, we feel about the Sydney Harbour? Oh, it still takes my breath away when I come to Sydney and I see the bridge. And yet the Acropolis, when the sun goes down and the yeah. moon is there. Yeah. I guess you take things away. for granted in your own backyard. So mm -hmm. uh, the moral is. Uh, so so, so the story is be proud of what you got. I guess. Okay, I want you to share an experience with me and a taxi driver in Athens. Do you have any? Oh yes, I've got a few taxi driver uh, stories, uh, especially the one, and I think this is a common story, as soon as you put your seatbelt on, you get told off <laughs> for putting on your seatbelt. Do you know they actually Or they can't... don't turn on the meter. Like, can you turn on the meter? Uh, don't worry about it, it's fine, one. You get out, you pay 4,000 drachmas or whatever it was last time I went. Then you go up to see your cousins and they go, how much do you pay? 4,000 drachmas. They go, it doesn't cost that much, it's 1,000 drachmas. You crazy, did you pay? So um, what about, everyone's what about been ripped the, where off. they actually the belt, they actually cut yes. the strap off so that it stops ringing and then people. Well, it's not only off. the crazy drivers, especially in the north where my uh, mum comes from. My dad's from Kalamata, mum's from Katerina, my wife's from her family's from Sedis, and we went up the north and they were driving at two hundred k's per hour. My uncle, who's my mum's twin brother, now my mum is the most religious, down to earth. Uh, a pious woman, wouldn't hurt a fly, and her twin brother was this manga, he used to get drunk and fly to Germany and then come back and he picked me up from the airport once, it was a surprise visit of course, Theo can you come and get me, he came to Thessaloniki, we're driving back, this is a man as old as my mum and he's driving at 200 k's 
and I am Kakare Pandelone in the car and I'm looking for the seatbelt. There's no Theo, where's the seatbelt? He goes, oh, you don't need a seatbelt. Driving 200 k's in a shit box. It was like a Datsun or something. And um, I guess that's the difference between Greece and Australia, isn't it? How um, ironic is it though that they have much older cars yeah. that they drive without limits and then we've got Sydney that has the most amazing cars Incredible speed, but every few meters we have a speed limit. Well, so it's, it's a nana state, isn't it? It's a nana state. It it's is, a nana it country. And so. it's almost a pity to see a car that can go at an incredible speed stop because of the rules and regulations. Yeah. And then you've got cars that literally fall apart when you drive them. But the other thing is, you drive, and yet they you go drive down the road in not only Athens, Galamata, or wherever you, and you see little liquid sake everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so they're all the dead people. They're all people that were speeding that died along but the way. But do you know what I feel every time I drove in Athens and I drive along the coast mm. and see these little ecclesia, which is these, like these little churches. When somebody passes away, that's where the spirit has left the body. So they have these little churches as a little memorial. Yeah, memorial. Style. Yeah. So every time I would drive past that area, and now that's the exact place that somebody has died. You need to slow down. I instantly, it's an instant reaction. I'll slow down. Yeah, it's probably there's so too. much money spent on marketing and advertising about speeding the, the here that we is, forget about and then suddenly Well, we in one sense, you know, because we've got our seatbelts and our speed regulations and all that, keeps us safe. Remember, it's for safety. It's a pain. Sure, but then you have the odd drunk driver on the road or, remember, or the average person looking at their mobile phone and we're all guilty exactly. of that. I remember going to Greece though, and that was years back, and um, we went to see Anavisi at uh, Steady, I think it was, the one with the big swimming pool. So to get a ticket now to go and see a show in Greece, you don't pay really for the ticket, you pay for the bottle of scotch. So you've got a bottle of scotch in front of you, what are you going to do? You're going to drink the scotch, including all the designated drivers drink the scotch too. So I remember going around that ride, round, you know the roundabout in front of the yeah. Acropolis? There's a big roundabout on two wheels, actually doing, going around the roundabout. On t so, and that's the difference, I guess, between Greece and Australia, you know, we're careful, we're safe, but in Greece, you know, it's just... In Greece, you live your life. This yeah. is not a nanny You live for the you moment, don't you don't live for the future, you live for the moment. <laughs> that's so true. And that's the thing, you that's enjoy so life for what it is now, not what it's going to be later. When you're too old to use it, you're too old to have fun, you know. i tell you what was funny when I went to Greece, you know, all these rules and regulations that they don't have. But then I was doing a thing for SBS. Um, it was a documentary and it was called uh, Aussie Jokers. So it was my story and half of it was shot in Australia and the other half was shot in Greece and I went up on the Acropolis and all that sort of stuff. Well, to go and shoot a documentary on the Acropolis, you need permission. You can't just go up there like you can on the Harbour Bridge or the Opera House and take a shot of someone. You need uh, special written permission, you need a permit which you pay for to be able to shoot um, a, a film or a documentary in front of the Acropolis and, and there's only certain things you can say too. So from no rules or regulations to super rules and regulations, um, so it's kind of a bit of both worlds isn't it, you know, it's, it's very loose and in other ways it's so strict and of course because it's the Acropolis and we're trying to maintain it, you know, we've already had the, uh, the Elgin marbles taken for right. it, from us, we don't want anything else taken from us, so I can see why they, uh, you know, they, they, they raise the bar when it comes but, to But it's also, I mean, Australia, Sydney being such a, a modern city, so we have the Harbour Bridge that so many people cross, you can't control any kind of filming really there. Yeah, with the true. amount of, and with everybody and their phones, that would also be the same with the Opera House and that much entertainment taking place in there. Yeah. It's very hard. Whereas with Athens, and that's a heritage that we are so proud of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got to tell you a funny story about the Acropolis. Here in Australia, everybody knows who I am because I've been on t TV so many years. I do so many TV shows, stand up shows. So I get to Greece, and then all of a sudden, I am a nobody. Not, like, I haven't been a nobody for 33 years that I've been in the business for. I haven't done anything else for a job, apart from performing, you know, writing, teaching, but it's all been drama, music, acting, what have you. So I get to Greece, and all of a sudden, I don't exist. I'm, you know, I'm like everybody else. You're like the you rest know, of us. Just a guy. So, uh, so it's a terrible feeling. You know, people say, what is it like being a celebrity? <laughs> Uh, is it a pain, you know, people recognise you all the time, but you know what? 
It's not that bad because when nobody recognises you, it's depressing. So I'm there on the Acropolis, no one's giving me, oh, giving me grief, you know, rules and regulations, what have you. I get outside, I go down, down to the gate again to get out of the Acropolis and there's a couple there from Sydney and they've gone, George! <laughs> George! They've seen another Australian, they're so excited, <laughs> plus an Australian on the TV. George! It's like we're related or something. I had no idea who they were, but I was so happy to be recognised by strangers. Wow. You know? So, okay, so going to Athens, then you could actually be really silly. You could do things that you wouldn't normally do I here. Could. I could. What would yeah. you have done if you were there now? Something yeah. silly that... Mm, well, some dumb, I did one Australian dumb thing, because people told me, if you, if you go to the Acropolis, again, the Acropolis, um, you can get away with if paying you, the Greek price. If you were to price. go to the Acropolis now? Yeah, the Acropolis Sorry, now. I just had to say that. <laughs> um, it's back on TV, Acropolis now. Did really? you know that? It's no. on the History Channel. Um, so, buy the box set from me. Um, well, you can do that. When you come and see my show, whichever one you're going to see. Do you know I'm doing a show? Did I no, tell you? no. I'm doing a brand new show here in Sydney. I'm doing a show. Uh, We're excited. Yeah, Canterbury uh, Leagues, the Bulldogs. Uh, it's my one man show called 54 Night Out, so it's a brand new show. 54 so Night Out? I called it 54 Night Out because my dad died when he was 54, and now I'm 54. Oh. So this is going to be a very funny year for me. He's old. Old, like him. <laughs> Hopefully I'll live through it. Um, and uh, the other show I'm doing that I'm very excited, excited so, so about. So what's that about? What's that 54 Night 54 Night Out. So it's a comedy about me, George, where I'm at okay. at the moment. So, Does it um, talk about your childhood? Does it talk, talk about, about childhood, talk about my dad passing away when he was 54, talk about you know going to the gym, trying to get healthy, all that stuff, midlife. It's George at his midlife crisis. Okay, that's, that's that could that's be why I'm wearing very, very a daddy hat. Okay, so uh, that's that Looking show. Looking forward to that. So that's going to be good. Uh, I'm so also that's doing. Good, so that's, you're in Canterbury. Canterbury Leagues, Canterbury 18th of March. 18th of March. And then the other show I'm doing, which uh, we've already started, we've done two shows, and it's got, gotten a great response. We, in fact, we just got a review, nine out of ten stars. So uh, that's a show called uh, Straight Out of Compo, which is me, Joel Vardy. Uh, Rob Shahadi and Tahir from the Hubbibis as well. So okay, that's so an awesome show. Straight out of compo. Straight out of compo. Relating to do, two different topics or? Straight out of compo. You know the movie Straight Out of Compton? Yes. So it's 80s and 90s rap music meets dodgy wogs on compo. <laughs> that, that's going to be hilarious. So I can't say anymore, but Looking it's pretty hilarious. It. Yeah, it's very funny. Yeah. People give you advice about going to Greece and they go, when you go to the Acropolis, okay, make sure you ask for the Greek price. Because they'll give it to you because you're a Greek. You won't have any problem. Just walk up there and go, how much is it? And they'll give you a price and they go, now la and they'll give you the Greek price, which well, is like look, half price. Look, George, here they give this little card when you go and you buy a coffee and they click a hole in it, click a hole, yeah. and then you end up getting your well, when you're Greek, and yeah. they're so proud to be Greek, it's like, you know what, I'm going to give you a discount. But well, guess what? I didn't get the discount. <laughs> he told me to piss off. He Why? chased me down. Why? What did you do? <laughs> I don't know. I said, can I have the Elinikit in me? He goes, I'm going to get out of Sofia, brother! So that's bullshit. Don't believe anybody that says that. Skata, na fane. No, so what you need to say is, what say he? O cafés? And they'll say, in it's three euro. Mm. Mia calitere timi, ya ina nele na sakimena. Maybe coffee. if you're a hot chick like yeah. you, but yeah. me, forget no. it. Well, I think that forget kind it. of lost it. <laughs> okay, what about a souvlaki? Yeah, What's the Can you let me get me? No, that's not what I would Maybe in Mykonos I would have gotten half price. You, you see?